Hey, what's up everybody? Josh here and on today's video, we're gonna take a look at one of the most highly anticipated guitar plugin updates ever. And that is the Archetype Gojira X from Neural DSP. So what is the X all about and why does that matter? Well, I'll tell you. So way back when in the year 2021, which seems like a million years ago in the guitar plugin world as they're being released every five minutes, we were introduced to the archetype Gojira. It was designed in collaboration with Joe Duplantier of the French metal band Gojira. And it took us from the heaviest of heavy places all the way to the cleanest and most majestic things we'd ever heard and everywhere in between. And it gave guitarists and studio engineers a wide sonic array to work with and quickly became one of the most popular, if not the most popular, plugin from Neural. So of course, as they continue to develop and release products, they added more quality of life features to them, they upscaled some of the visuals, they did just the little things that helped propel them to the top of the plugin world which they currently sit. So the public outcry for some of those features to be added to like the OG plugins like Gojira and Pliny was pretty hot. And of course, Neural answered the call. Not only did they go back and add some of those features to the older plugins, but they also added more presets. They upscaled some visuals, and I think in the Pliny one, they even added a new pedal or effect or something. But we're talking about Gojira right now. So let's take a look at this, see if the hype is real, and see what it can do. So I've got it loaded into Fruity Loops here, and I've dialed in just a quick rhythm preset to show you what I like to do with it. And let's just hear how it sounds, man. That is it, baby. This hot amp that they've got modeled in here, number three on the list, is so dang good. That's what the kids came here for, man. That is what this plugin was designed to do, provide that crazy high gain goodness and rumble the walls down. So let's take a look at what else this plugin has to offer. So with the amps, we have first a clean amp, which I'm not sure what they modeled it after, but it's got like this Frankenstrat EVH striping going on. So that leads me to believe maybe it's like the clean channel of an EVH or something. I'm not quite sure. It doesn't really matter. It sounds fantastic. Then we have what's called the rust amplifier. And the rust amp is somewhere between that mid gain and high gain. The gain sweep on it is huge. So this can go from zero to a thousand real quick and you could do some really cool things with it. Let's hear how it sounds just nooned out. <laughs> So you can tell it's a little more bright and crunchy and punchy, maybe more like a blue channel of an EVH or something, but sounds fantastic. And we'll take a look at that a little bit more later on. So let's take a look at the signal chain. So on the signal chain, starting all the way on the left, we have here two Octaver type pedals. The first one is what they have here called a wow pedal. Sorry, wow. I had to do it. And I don't know if that stands for something or if that's just what you say when you turn it on because it basically makes your guitar sound like this. <laughs> Sounds so cool, man. I love that fatso type setting, the that octaver to give you a little beef. If you play something a little more single note oriented. <laughs> it just sounds so awesome. So you can do a couple things with this pedal that are really cool. You can hook a MIDI pedal up to it if you want to articulate it, or you can grab it with the mouse. So check this out. So you can get all over the place. Blade one basically makes that a one octave sweep. Blade two makes it a two octave sweep. So you could get all kinds of crazy here. Next, you have a more traditional octaver. So you're gonna get that more traditional octaver type sound out of it. You can hear it sounds pretty much like we had it on the Fatso, but the difference here is we can express it, we cannot, excuse me, express it with a pedal, and we have a little more precise control over how much is in there, either on octave one or two. So I either use it like I just did, or I'll take it down to like, I don't know, 15% or so, just to add a little bit of texture to the sound. <laughs> So 
So it's definitely something you feel more than you hear in a mix. Next, we have the stomp box section. So you have your, your classic tube screamer style overdrive here, and you'll notice it's not engaged, and we're already down here. So this amp can do what it needs to even without a boost. You can tighten it up, of course, with this, or you can really push it and go to some crazy territory. The dirt pedal, or the distortion pedal, adds another layer of distortion, so that takes us from this to something like this. Just here it saturates a little more, gives it a little more dirt. I think that's a good way to describe it, a little more grit. And you'd probably notice that a little bit more on the lower gain amplifiers or lower gain settings. The phaser here. Nope. So you can get that phaser sound if you want to play eruption. There you go. All you got to do is turn that pedal on and boom, you there you play that. Next we have a chorus pedal. Can't forget about the chorus. So the chorus pedal is awesome and you can do a lot of fun things with that, especially with your clean sounds. But there you go, a pretty wide sonic array of things to choose from and totally shape your sound. Moving on to the amp face, this is where you spend most of your time. Let's take a quick look at some of these features. So the first feature that they added in that everybody was just going crazy for was this transposer. And if you're not familiar with what a transposer is, I'll tell you. Basically, it changes the pitch of your guitar without you having to touch any of this stuff up here. You just tell it you want it to go higher or lower. So here's an example. If I want this note to be this note, all I have to do is tell the program I want to take the pitch of my guitar down four steps, and now all of a sudden, there you go. So now you can play your arch enemy stuff. I mean, or you can play whatever you want, really. <laughs> but there's nothing like playing some C standard arch enemy good chunkiness, man. So anyway, that's what the transposer can do. You can take it all the way down the whole octave if you want to and get some Mick Gordon style stuff. You know, don't sue me. And uh, you can get totally crazy there, or you can go higher if you want and make this, instead of, open, uh, instead of drop A, you can make it drop B if you want, or even drop C. So whatever you're into, you can totally get there and the transpose feature is really responsive in this. It doesn't sound synthetic. It doesn't sound like it's not supposed to be happening. Moving on to the other feature that they added that was really cool is the doubler. So the doubler takes your sound from something like this to something like this with the click of a button. Check this out. It adds that widening effect by putting a little bit of delay between the speakers and you can adjust how much here as well and make it really big or not so big at all, subtle or more in your face. The doubler's awesome, it just gives you that extra volume you need, baby. So that is the amp face section and some of those features. Moving on to the cabinet section, this is like Neural's claim to fame is their Cabism IR setup they have. You have lots of microphone options to choose from on either side. You have your dynamics, your condensers, and your ribbons. You can load your own IR if you wish, as always, and dual them up. Normally, I have a Dynamic 57 and a 421 for my rhythm sound, which would give us this. And I really like how the 421 sounds. It has a little more bright character to it, but I have been falling in love with this 414 big time. There's just a little more bass response in there, and I like the warmth it adds. So we're gonna stick with that one for the rhythm, but of course you have all these options to choose from. Go crazy. So on the pulsed side of things, we have three different EQs for three different amps. You'll notice as I click through them, they change up. So not only do you have a nine band EQ to work with, but you also have high and low pass filters. So here's your high pass filter. If you want to tame some of that low end, and then you have a low pass filter. So you can really manipulate the tone on both ends, and that is kind of a 
uh, hidden power of some of these EQs that people don't utilize a whole lot. I know I haven't in the past, and as I've learned more, I've really started to dial in some filtering to the EQ, and it just makes a ton of difference in the mix. So there you go. Moving on to the post section, or I guess the post post section, you have your delay and reverb. The delay is feature packed. It's got a tape saturation and tape mod on it. You can tap it, you can sync it with the DAW or do your milliseconds, whatever works for you. And then you have a reverb with a shimmer. So what does a shimmer do? Well, check this out. You wanna get that angelic sound? Listen to this. <laughs> Wasn't that great? How about I turn the pedal on? Let's try that again. So. There you go. <laughs> hey, we're doing this live, man. We're gonna have that happen. So there's your reverb with the shimmer and we're rocking. So that is kind of a basic overview of what is in you know, store for you as you explore the plugin. Let's dial in or talk about a couple presets that I came up with just to show you what I like to do with them. But before we do, I wanna show you, there are tons and tons of presets in this. Look at all these presets, man, from the artists that they added in here, it's insane. Gojira has a bunch, Neural has a bunch. I mean, you could spend hours and hours here just in the preset department getting inspired. I have a few that I've created. The, the one we'll check out right here is a clean amplifier setting. We'll use a single coil for it and we'll see how we like that one. If we dial that back a little bit and split, we get that really cool 80s type sound. So I really love the clean amp on this and what it can do. It's not too soft. There's enough spank in there to really get, you know, whatever sound you want out of it. And you can tame it down as well. So that's one of the things that, you know, maybe people aren't gonna think of the clean amp right off the bat when you think of a Gojira plugin. But if you're familiar with the band and you understand kind of how they go all over the place, it really doesn't surprise you that much. So what we've got for that one, I do have the Octaver on. I remember that trick I told you about earlier. I have it just barely dialed in, but it gives it a little more punch. And then I've also got some chorus going, nothing else really there. And then of course, I've got reverb and delay going on that. So we're in good shape there. Let's talk about another preset using the Rust amplifier. This one I've called Lady Grey. And this is, I'm using a little bit of reverb on this one and I'm pushing it with the overdrive to get it where I want it. And this one I use for stuff that I want to be real chunky, man. Almost like my Devin Townsend style stuff. So you can get this amp where you want it, man, with that beefy chunkiness. And you'll notice I'm also using the, the third cabinet down here for a little different speaker character. And then we've got a lead tone here that we're using the hot amp for. And this is what I would you know, use for my solo type stuff. So I love the character of the hot amp for that lead stuff. It just cuts right through everything, of course. And you can see we're using some overdrive on this one. We're not really doing much here. Um, we do have this available to us if we want to use it, but actually I'm not even using it. I don't know why I even turn it on. 
But then we also have on the back end our delay and reverb going and it's pretty basic stuff but it sounds really nice. The last one I'll show you here is actually using the heck out of these octave or pedals. I mean it's just insane. And then uh, we've got some distortion overdrive going and we're going to be using the clean amp to get <laughs> like a, I don't know what you call it. It's almost like a Hammond organ or something but check this out man. <laughs> I love doing that kind of stuff with this plugin and you can totally get there. I used an effect similar to this in my song Wood Sage from Sonic Parallels in 2023 that came out. Um, check it out on Spotify if you want. Shameless plug, there you go. And if you use your single coil on this, it sounds a little less aggressive. <laughs> I can just play that all day, man. And I like using the single coil on that to get that kind of, you know. So that could be a little hidden gem for you in you know a rhythm track just real low to augment the other guitars and kind of add some beef i don't know maybe maybe i'll try that out but that's what this plugin does man it inspires you to do cool things so here's the deal here's my final thoughts on it is it worth the hype absolutely 100 percent a million billion yes here's the other deal if you own archetype gojira the original this is free a free upgrade so go get it go download it right now go to the website and be done with it. <laughs> Boom, there you go. So that's a no brainer. It's Neural's way of saying thank you for being loyal customers and by golly, it is very generous of them to offer it for free with all the stuff that comes with it, yo. And then if you're new to this, you may as well go check out this new X update because it's gonna have all of the goods and I don't think it's gonna take you long to make a purchase decision if you like what you hear. So. My friends, thanks for hanging out with me today as we checked out the Archetype Gojira X. Leave a comment below, like, subscribe, all that good stuff if you want to keep seeing cool content like this. All right, folks, we'll see you later.